we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our second segment, which is going to be doing the 10 to 20 portion of our power rankings. But before we do that, I'd like to ask you again to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so I'm sure that your question does get read in the air. Please use the link, gsmcpodcast.net. It really does help the show, and it really does mean a lot, so thank you so much for that. And let's get back into the show for today. All right, as I talked about, we are going to be continuing our power rankings here. Do this every Friday. So if you want to leave a comment on uh, some questions you have about it in the chat or in the comments, whether you're watching on YouTube or live, let me know. But yeah, we're going to go from number 10 to 20 here. Starting off at number 10, we have our third AL Central team of this list, the Minnesota Twins. Now, the Twins got off to a really rough start this year, really not doing as great as I expected them to. I expected them to be one of the more elite AL teams, I kind of thought. Of course, it was the Yankees and Orioles, but after that, the second tier was the Astros and the Twins. But the Twins have not got off to a great start, mainly because of injuries, I'd say. But have gotten a lot of people back, mainly Byron Buxton and Carlos Correa. And have done very, very well as of recently. Had a bolt into the top 10 here in my power rankings. Back uh, back in the thick of things in the L Central. Probably would be leading, but at the same time, the Royals and Guardians have just exceeded everyone's expectations out of the water. So, yeah, they've done a great job here building this back up with the Twins have so much talent especially in the pitching staff you lose Sonny Gray and really don't miss a beat in it so you'll have Pablo Lopez in there and have some of your great young talent in there like a Simeon Woods Richardson like a Bailey Ober so there's a lot to love about this Twins team I think they're really good and yeah number 10 here in my uh, my power rankings at number 11 I have the Chicago Cubs another central team the Cubs are under 500, but only one game, and I love the amount of talent they have on this team. Shota Imanaga, of course, having an amazing season. Has gotten roughed up a little bit recently, but at the same time is still having an amazing season and is still a Cy Young favorite right now and is, of course, the Rookie of the Year favorite. So, yeah, a lot to love about this Cubs team. Of course, the offense, you have Seiya Suzuki, Cody Bellinger, some other great talented players there as well. So, yeah, I think that overall... This Cubs team is has done very, very well this year. Have impressed me. I didn't really expect them to be that as good as they are currently. I expect them to be decent, but not as good as they currently are. So, yeah, props to them. They've done very, very well, and they deserve this spot here at number 11. Number 12 is another team that has exceeded expectations and surprised me, the Boston Red Sox. Now, the Red Sox were a team I, like a lot of people, just thought would kind of be mediocre going into this year. We heard that they were all in for the offseason, then neglected to sign a single notable free agent. And the only real big move they had was trading for Tyler O'Neill, who has been very good, but still very under, underwhelming offseason, I'd say. But it does not matter. The pitching staff has been really fantastic. You've had like guys like Garrett Whitlock, Tanner Houck, Nick Pavetta really break out into being strong contributors. You've had an amazing season from Rafi Devers at the hot corner over there. You had Tristan Gazzas was doing very well before he got hurt. Tyler O'Neill, again, like I mentioned before, has been a very good addition in the uh, trade market with, with their outfield. So, yeah, there's a lot to love about this Red Sox team. They've done very, very well. And surprise me, I really did not expect them to be that good this year. And having them at number 12 is not something I expected to say. But, hey, they've done very, very well and have been a very good team. So, yeah. Number 13 here, I have the San Diego Padres. Now, the Padres, again, like the Red Sox, are right around that 500 mark, are, are, are under it right now, as I believe. So, might be a little high for them. But at the same time, the NL has been very weak this year, so there's going to be a lot of teams under 500 in this area. But I love this Padres team. Love's a strong word, I'd say, actually. I like I like this Padres team a lot. I think there's a lot of good talent here. You, of course, have Luis Arias, who they traded for midseason, who's done a very nice job of helping this offense out that is really underperformed. Of course, Fernando Tatis Jr., Manny Machado, who has underperformed, but I think will be better uh, soon. Jake Cronenworth has been good. Xander Bogarts was okay before he got hurt. ha Kim has been very good. Jackson Merrill's really come into his own in the outfield. Jerks and Profar, one of the biggest surprises of the entire year, has done really, really great. Pitching staff, there's some concern. You have Joe Musgrove and you Darvish both currently on the IL. But Dylan Cease has done well, and Matt Waldron is a good piece. So we'll have to see. Hey, maybe they'll trade for Garrett Crochet. That was one of my segment ones a few days ago. So uh, that's a possibility to really help this pitching staff out. So there's still a lot to like about this Padres team. Still a lot of good pieces. I love the Arias trade looking back at it. I feel like he's a really great fit in this lineup. His versatility helps a lot as well. So, yeah, uh, this Padres team is 
so far very good. And I'm sure they'll add the deadline like AJ Preller always does. So number 13 here in my power rankings. Number 14, I have the defending National League champion, Arizona Diamondbacks. Now, the Diamondbacks were a team I was extremely high on going into the year. I called them the third best team in the National League, and they very much disappointed me. Now, there's been a lot of injury risk, not a lot of injury risk, a lot of injuries this year to them, which I will say, and I will we'll put that out there. You've had a lot of pieces of your rotation get hurt. Merrill Kelly, Eduardo Rodriguez. You also had Jordan Montgomery be on and off, and when he has been playing he hasn't been that great so you know there has been some setbacks with the rotation which is definitely a part of this but the offense as well has struggled Corbin Carroll after an insane rookie rookie year last year has really been bad I think that shoulder surgery from the offseason is really hindering him so still some pieces here that you like about this time back seem like a Tom Marte is having a great season I do have them up at number 14 didn't really have them as high before so they have done better as of recently but yeah not uh, not as great as you'd expect it to go this year coming off of a National League pennant win. So, yeah, definitely some underperformance here, but still a lot to like about this team. Still a lot of great players and a lot of great pieces. So I uh, have them here at number 14. At exactly the middle spot here, I have the Tampa Bay Rays, number 15. Now, the Rays are another team that is just very mediocre. I expect them to kind of be that this year with all the pitching injuries they've had, with the shortstop situation they have with Wander Franco probably never playing in the MLB again. So, overall, there is um, a lot of question marks about this race team because of the injuries sustained going, into, going from last year into this year now because of how big they were. So, never really expected much from this team. I think they could sell the deadline as well, so make them even worse. So, not really too much to say about them, but still a lot of talent. And Randy Rosarena hasn't even gotten it going, so I think once he does, this team will be better. So I do have them at number 15 here, but still, if you have, if you want to have them lower, I'm not really going to debate it. I just think the pure talent on this team is a lot to argue about, and uh, there still is a lot to like here. So number 15 here for the Tampa Bay Rays. At number 16 here, I have the Detroit Tigers. Now the fourth AL Central team here in the top 20. So uh, yeah, just a hint, White Sox will not be in the top 20. I can, I can tell you that right now, so don't get your hopes up, AL Central fans. But, yeah, the t Tigers here at number 16. I, I did expect more from them this year. They haven't been as great as I expected, but there's still a lot of pieces to like. Riley Green is still has been excellent. Mark Cann has been a great addition from the trade market, who you might get more back at, at the trade deadline. So that's a positive there. You also, of course, have... Um, you know, you of course have some underperformance with Parker Meadows and Spencer Torkelson. Two players I expect to be very good this year and both have been sent down. Colt Keith has not been great as well coming off of that extension. So there is, of course, some some players that I expect to be much better for this Tigers team that have not been great. But the pitching staff's done well. Kentamaya has been better as of recently. Jack Flaherty has been a really great signing for them. Um, you also have Tarek Skubal, who's been a Cy Young favorite right now, as I expected, as like most people expected. So, yeah, Tigers have done... You know, the Tigers have had they've been on and off this year. Some things to like, some things not to. So, yeah, have them here at number at number sixteen. Number seventeen, I have the defending world champion, Texas Rangers. Simply put, the Rangers have had a lot of injuries this year. T Jacob Degrom, Tyler Malley, Max Scherzer, Wyatt Langford, Evan Carter, just to name some of the notable guys who have been on and off the injured list all year. So, yeah, um, not really their fault with how this has gone this year. Maybe should have gotten more pitching. Maybe should have tried to re-sign Jordan Montgomery more. But it's what it is. And yeah, number 17 here for the Rangers feels right. They'll be better once everyone gets healthy. But as of right now, with all the injuries where they are, just not going to have them as high as you maybe expect. Number 18, I have the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, the Blue Jays have been a big disappointment this year. Really a team I expect to be much better and have not done well. Just there's been a lot of underperformance with the hitting core, especially Kevin Gosman hasn't been that great. So, you know, bullpen's been kind of iffy. So, yeah, just a very mediocre Blue Jays team. I think this is a team that desperately needs a change of direction, whether that's a retool, a fill-out rebuild, going all in on some player like they tried to this offseason with Juan Soto and Shohei Otani, who, of course, they were unsuccessful in getting. It'll be very, very interesting to end up seeing what does happen with this Blue Jays team as the season does go on. But... Yeah, have been very disappointing this year and just uh, not, not a team that has definitely lived up to my expectations being here at number 18. 
Number 19, I have the St. Louis Cardinals. Cardinals have done better as of recently. I did have them as the fifth best team in the NL, uh, as the fourth best team in the NL Central, but I've moved them up to top. I've moved them to the third best. The offense has been better as of recently, which is the big thing. Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arano have done better, which really, when they go, this whole team goes, so that makes them better. The rotation has been surprisingly good with Sonny Gray doing, of course, great. Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson not being horrible. So still a lot of stuff not to like with the rotation after those three guys and after Sonny Gray as well. I don't really feel confident in them, even what their numbers say. The offense, a lot of underperformance. The bullpen has been amazing, so that is something to like about this Cardinals team. That 7, 8, 9 guys, I mean, Ryan Fernandez, Andrew Kitteridge, Jojo Romero, um, Ryan Helsley, all have been amazing out of the bullpen. There's that to like, but overall still uh, not not great things with this Blue Jays team and maybe, you know, haven't lived up to the entire expectations. So have them here at number 19. Number 20, I have the Cincinnati Reds. This Reds team I expect to be much better this year. I thought this would be the year they finally break out with other young talent, but unfortunately with injuries and suspensions for PEDs, they just lost a lot of players before the season even started with Matt McClain, Novelli Marte. Frankie Montas also got hurt in season. Nick Lodolo has been on off the injured list, so just not their year for the Reds. I think they'll I think they'll be much better next year when all the injury stuff is figured out. And uh, yeah, that's really all I got to say about them. So just an unfortunate year for them. All right, so that was our second segment here, talking about our twenty, our number ten to twenty segments here for the power rankings. We're moving on to our third segment, which is going to be talking about the last leg of the power rankings, 21 to 30. So, yeah, stick around for that, and we'll see you after the break. So, thanks, and bye. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it?